In this video we're going to put the uh, Harbor Freight bead roller motor onto this uh, Princess Auto bead roller. So the first step is just kind of getting the uh, bead roller organized. I haven't used this one too much so you have to set all of your uh, grub screws on your uh, gears and your spacers. So there's some grub screws here as well as uh, inside the uh, gear, the sprockets, and then there's some spacers again that you need to uh, get set. So there's key ways you can set these into. On the uh, far end here, the key ways don't line up with the grub screws. So that's not a real matter of concern. So I'm gonna turn off the camera and I'm gonna get the uh, motor hanging off of the uh, bead roller. I've got a couple of uh, vice grips I've been using to uh, get that lined up. So as you can see, I've got the uh, motor attached with a pair of uh, vice grips here. Just, uh, what I did was I set the uh, grub screw here. So there's about a, an eighth of an inch play. I can move the uh, coupling back this way. And I did the same thing here so I can move the coupling about an eighth of an inch forward. I wanted to make sure I didn't have the coupling bound up when I do my uh, final attachment. So I'll have to go over that with a straight edge and make sure things are aligned. It looks to me like the motor might be facing up a little bit on the uh, tail end here. So you'll see it's uh, the spacers that come with the uh, kit do work. But we have a, a cast iron section here. And it looks like uh, I'll be able to drill holes through at the end of the, uh, the plate and miss the cast iron, like the large section, so I can do some through holes. I'll have to verify that. We'll know by the end of this which way uh, I go. So I guess we'll give a, a little demo of this device here. So the first thing that surprised me was that, uh, not that I'm complaining, I'm just surprised by it, was that there is a bit of a delay with the action of the motor. So I'm under like low speed. So you can turn it very, very low. That's half speed. Put in reverse. So I don't have any dies attached here. So I'm hoping by the end of the video I can uh, run a piece of metal through the, the bead roller here so we can see what it's capable of doing. You see the way the uh, coupling is attached here. You wouldn't be able to slide the uh, shaft too easily. I'm sure you could figure something out to do that, but it's not like, jumping out at me as to how you do that easily. So uh, I'll stop the video here. I'll get uh, things lined up with the straight edge and uh, get the hole started. Alright, this is the method I'm using for uh, aligning the motor to the uh, base of the uh, bead roller. So I just used a, a digital caliper here and a straight bar. I usually use this for aligning uh, motorcycle sprockets actually. I think it's a piece of 3 8 bar stock. But it's uh, straight and easy to work with. So I've got about a millimeter of play from one end to the other. I feel I can fix that with the uh, bolts. So I'm going to drill my holes through here in a second. All right, just getting ready to drill the holes here and it uh, dawned on me there's one more part we have to work on. And that's the uh, guard for the uh, cogs here. So it turns out that my uh, leaving some conservative space here so I can uh, adjust the motor later is not going to work. I just right on the edge of the uh, teeth here. So when I put this together the final time I'll have to slip things in a little bit further. So it's uh, an M12 by 1.75 is the uh, tap we're going to be using. So we're going to use a 13 and 30 second uh, tap drill. I'm going to be using like around an eighth of an inch as my starter bit as well. I would have liked to have a transfer punch but I don't have that 
I do have uh, on top of these taps here I bought a uh, a bottoming tap and talking to the millwrights at work they tell me I need to go about three turns deeper than the uh, depth of the bottoming or the depth of the uh, bolt for the tap the bottoming tap to work so I'll have to do that I want to get that right on the first shot so I'll have to do some measuring to get that right so uh, I guess we'll get around to drilling this hole here in a second alright got the hole drilled it's pretty easy going in the cast iron I have to disconnect the uh, grill screws here You can sort of turn the motor by hand, but not easily. But there's a big uh, reduction gear inside of it. That's kind of how it works. You get the speed and torque it needs. So this is the uh, tap that I got. It's a Baylax. I found it on eBay. It's not easy to read because of the light. It's meant for cast iron. It's a bottoming uh, tap. I think it's 545236. I think it's meant for using a, a machine on it, so it's got some extra information on it. We're just going to do it by hand. The uh, hole came out just beside the uh, cast iron. If you can see it or not, it's just in there. So I don't really need the bottoming tap. If you plan your work you won't need it either, but it's the only one I've got. Turns out my set doesn't have one. Have a uh, an M12 tap in it. So I have not done this in a while. So let's see how it goes. Oh, you see, starting it straight is the most important part. And I should be using a regular tap to start it straight, from what I remember the millwright's telling me. Because this is pretty aggressive at the tip of it. So we'll see if we can get it in there without making a big old mess. I have a feeling I'm going to have to go shopping. I don't think this is going to go very well to get a, a proper tap. Certainly not the recommended way of doing this. When you talk to professionals, it might work. Just got a bit of oil here. So I was talking to millwrights, they told me that normally you use uh, three different taps when you're doing a bottoming hole. You use an aggressive one to start, that, or not aggressive, but like a, more of a taper on it. And you use another tap after that. And then you finish with the bottoming tap. So I'll recommend what they recommend. You should get three different taps to do this so that it goes a bit easier. Of course it'll all be the same thread pitch. Luckily this is a good strong tap. It's meant to be run on a machine.
and obviously the threading part is only because I've got the cast iron machine. If you have the ones that are made out of plate, they have uh, a piece that moves here. It's got the bushing built into it, and you would be bolting onto that part and not the cast iron. And yet, you just saw that. So there's a lot of body filler on this thing. It must be a terrible casting. So I just lost about a 16th inch thick chunk of body filler. Off of it. So just about through now. Hopefully this doesn't bind up on the side where the end of the hole is and snap the end of the tab off. That's the problem with uh, if you drill a hole and you're part way into a thicker material and a thinner material. That's a real possible possibility. But no, I'm through. I'm okay. Let's see if we can show you that or not. So I've got plenty of thread through there. Should be okay. Next step is uh, test the bolt with the washer. It has a lot of washers here, six of them. Six of this uh, M12 washer. Probably to give a spacer depending on the whatever thickness you need. I'll just put on all three, see if uh, with all three you get that much sticking out. If I can get that all the way in without it bumping into the shaft, we're going to be all right. So you can see the bolts coming through that far. I still have to put the motor back on. So with the three washers, I am not going to have a, a problem with uh, rubbing on the shaft. So I guess we'll stop the video. I'll do the last hole. And we'll do the final finishing assembly of this thing. Okay, just getting things lined up. I found a little trick when you're tightening these two bolts. You know you're aligned. Like rather than using a straight edge for the final part, if you can move the coupling back and forth relatively easily, you know that you're in pretty good shape. So I got the uh, the guard on here. The M12s use an 18 millimeter socket. And then this is uh, nice and tight, there's no gaps in there. So let's go over that with an Allen key and then uh, we'll get to doing some metal work. Alright, I guess we're ready for our maiden voyage here with the bead roller using the uh, motor. I noticed that uh, I'll have to take the guard off and readjust the shafts. The top shaft is sticking out further than the bottom one. So I'll go and I'll deal with that at a later date. But uh, I've got a, what I think is the right amount of pressure on here. I've never used it before. So we'll see if we can get a bead. And that bumping that you heard is likely the uh, grub screws on these wheels. So these are 21 millimeter here, so I'll loosen that up. 
Looks like I need full pressure on here if I'm going to get this bead to take. Check the view on the camera. Looks pretty good. So let's see if we can follow the same track or not. So I've got like a, no space between the wheels now. You can see what I got on the first pass. First time I've actually used this machine in my life. So, looks like it doesn't want to take it. There we go. It's easy enough to follow the lines. That's the second pass. Just gonna walk behind the camera and see what it looks like for you. Any value in giving it another pass or not? We'll try it. That's a pretty high speed. I should probably be using less speed. Let's see if we can get any more tightness. A little more pressure. Turn it down a little bit. That was like 75% uh, speed, and I'm going to go down to half speed now. I felt like I didn't have enough control at three quarter speed. I was a complete novice. So you see, I need to push with my stomach there a little bit just to get it started. So suck it into the wheels. It's not starting quite right. That's probably the way uh, I got it going. You can see at the end, I feel it looks a bit better. You can look down the track, a little bit of wavering. So I guess I'll try the shears on this next to see if we can lop off the part that I used to be working on. I never set up the shears before, so I'll start up the camera and we'll, we'll get back to it when I'm ready. Alright, camera just shut off for some reason. I don't know if the battery's dying or what. This will be the last pass. Anyway, you didn't miss anything. I got like full pressure on here. I'm going all over the place. All right, what I see is that the uh, dies have separated themselves about an 18th gauge, 18 gauge width, so it's not going to cut it. Literally not going to cut the metal. So I would have need to put the uh, bolts in on the end. So I'll get that set up and we'll uh, try it again one more time. Okay, so uh, I got a little bit of cutting here. I'm not going to go through the short trying to do it again. But basically I tightened this as much as I could put the uh, bolt in here but the uh, top die is still sliding in a little bit so I got to spend a little bit more time working on the grub screws and getting things lined up so that the top and the bottoms are set up correctly so that the uh, when you're using this style of die so that the centers are lined up and I assume when those are lined up that these will also be lined up and I might be able to get some cutting action out of it whether it provides a quality cut, I'm not sure. I took a bunch of shots at it, and uh, I'm not so sure whether it's going to be quality to the point where you can use it. But it was uh, worth an effort. So, uh, seems to work. I'm not a professional. So if uh, you have any requests for me to try anything for you to see what you want to see done with it, I can certainly do that. I've got a uh, various different types of beads. I'm going to be using this thing more in the future. So like I said, I'm willing to experiment for you if you want me to do that. I got some metal available here. It's all 18 gauge 
cold rolled steel. So, uh, hey, I guess that's it for tonight. Have a good evening. All right, another one of those never ending videos. I thought of another thing to look at. So what is inside of this? So there is a, uh, a motor capacitor and then there is a speed controller. I'm not going to give up Eastwood's intellectual property here and tell you exactly what the part numbers are. But if you can figure out what that is, you might be able to make one of these. So anyway, good luck to you.